Hey guys, welcome back to Awesome Build. I know it's been a while and I'm sorry about that, but I appreciate your patience. Um, I haven't been uh, taking a vacation or anything like that necessarily. I've just been really busy with some other projects, um, as you can see, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys. As we get closer and closer, I'll probably be posting some more stuff on my Facebook page, some little snidbits behind the scenes and stuff like that. and. I will be covering uh, some of the stuff on some future episodes of Awesome Build. But however, because there is so much kind of going on, so much to do, um, I won't be able to post episodes every week. It'll probably be more like every other week uh, for the time being until I kind of get uh, past this major project and some other projects that are going on. So uh, I do apologize for that. I would love to do this show every week, but um, with everything else that's going on, I have to kind of just keep the workflow going. So let's just go right into it. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so today we're going to be covering tools of the trade, or at least the tools that you kind of need to start out with. And these are mostly the tools that I used when I started making props years ago. I've had a lot of people ask me what kind of tools I use or what kind of tools are good to start out with if they want to start making props or costumes or that kind of thing. For me, these are kind of like the core tools that I use when I first started making props. Um, and they're pretty basic and some of these, a lot of these you'll probably already have like in your garage or at home or whatever, but um, and they're all pretty easy to obtain. So all these tools aren't super expensive, they're not going to break the bank, and if you're serious about making props, then these are the basic core tools that you should probably start out with. So safety first. Uh, if you haven't already, go out and get some safety goggles or some kind of safety glasses or any kind of goggles you know, that you can see clearly and they're gonna protect your eyes. Another very important one because you're gonna be doing a lot of painting or using different chemicals is respirator. You know, it's not uh, super expensive. It'll be probably about 30 bucks maybe for a decent respirator and some filters. And again, I highly recommend it guys, if you're gonna be doing anything that has any kind of, uh, you're gonna be giving off any kind of fumes or anything like that, um, you know, take care of yourselves. It's really worth it. And then I would also just buy a, a package of these uh, disposable masks that you can wear for any time you're gonna be doing any sanding or anything like that. You know, you can, you can use the respirator, but um, it's great to have if you have other people working in the shop and stuff like that and you're going to be doing a lot of sanding. You don't want to be breathing in any of that dust, the sawdust or plastic dust or foam dust or anything like that. And when you're working, always make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area, right? Makes sense. Um, you want to take care of your hands, right? So some nice work gloves come in handy. I've got a variety of different pairs. It really doesn't matter. You can get a pair of decent work gloves for three or four bucks probably um, and up, you know, but... You don't need to spend a ton of money. You can just get a pair of decent work gloves that are gonna last you and protect your hands. Also, some vinyl or latex gloves that protect your hands when you're mixing any kind of chemicals or using different kind of adhesives or paint or whatever. Um, you know, protect yourselves. So we'll start off with some of the most basic and probably tools that you have lying around your house. Um, we'll just start with different rulers. It's different straight edges. A T-square is great to have. Um, just a ruler. I recommend an architect's ruler. It really comes in handy. And tried and true, just a, a tape measure. Another invaluable and very inexpensive thing you'll need are clamps. Now you can get these pretty cheap. You can usually buy a, a decent clamp for about a buck. Or you can buy usually a kit or a set of different clamps or something like that for about 20 or 25 bucks. Um, I think I got a set of four or five and get, uh, I, would get a, I would get a variety too of different sizes and stuff like that. And um, again, you're gonna use them all the time. So uh, invest in some, in some clamps. <laughs> tape, you're gonna use masking tape, uh, or painter's tape, duct tape, electrical tape. You're gonna need a variety of different kind of tape for either marking things off or holding things in place. It's just gonna come in handy. You're gonna use it all the time. My favorites is the metallic tape. Uh, this stuff is, you can probably find at your hardware store. It's gonna be in the area for duct work and stuff like that. 
and uh, I use it all the time for a variety of different applications and it really comes in handy. You'll need things to cut with like scissors or some hobby shears. Now these I've had for probably about 15 years. Uh, they're great because I can cut leather, I can cut thin aluminum and they're pretty rigid and they, they really have held up and for me they've, they've lasted the test of time. Uh, and then of course an exacto knife. An exacto knife or any kind of utility knives. I have all kinds of utility knives. This is an invaluable tool. You're going to use it all the time. It's great for cutting foam and keep again keep your blades sharp or keep extra blades on hand. Uh, you always want to use a really sharp blade. You don't want to uh, mess around with a dull blade and screw up a cut or anything like that. So keep your blade sharp or replace them frequently. Uh, and of course other retractable knives. And then of course just things to write with. You need a pencil to make mark. A sharpie is great. Yeah. I would probably even invest in just getting one of these little hobby kits. You can just, they come in different variations and stuff like that. But this one I bought probably about seven or eight years ago. Use it all the time. It's got a variety of different types of blades, saws, carving tools, a plane, sanding block, little measuring tape, calipers. Um, it was a great value. I think it was like 25 or 30 bucks. And it's got a variety of stuff in there that I use all the time. And a saw of some kind. Just a hand saw will do, but if you have power tools or whatever, that's great. But uh, for years I got by with just a hand saw. Uh, hot glue gun. Hot glue gun. Again, is a, a staple. You're going to need it and you're going to use it almost every day if you're building props or making costumes or anything like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, this is a nicer one, it's a DeWalt, but for years I used really cheap, uh, you know, hot glue guns you can get at a hobby store or Michael's or something like that. You're going to need needle nose pliers and some wire cutters or snips, hammer. screwdrivers, pliers, or some kind of vice grips, channel locks, something like that. Files. I would get a set of files. Uh, they, they really do come in handy. You're going to use them quite a bit. Sandpaper. I would get a variety of different grits, sandpaper, emery cloth. You can usually buy a packet uh, or like a variety pack or something like that. Sanding sponges. I use all the time. Sanding blocks. Some kind of sandpaper. Something you're going to be doing a lot of sanding if you're going to be making props. And one of the main tools that sort of, when I really started making props, the one that I became invaluable that I really use all the time on almost every project would be my Dremel. Now, you don't have to get a super, super expensive one. When I started off, I just had, it was pretty simple. It was actually a battery powered Dremel and it did the job fine for a little while. Eventually I needed something that was a little bit heavier duty, but you can definitely start off with a cheaper version, you know, just to kind of get used to it and get used to the different bits and stuff and the different applications. But again, I use this all the time for grinding, sanding, cutting, buffing. There's gonna be such an array of things that you're gonna use it for. Um, you're gonna wonder how you ever get along without it. So definitely you invest in, a, you know, it doesn't have to be a super expensive one, but invest in a decent uh, rotary tool. And um, again, you usually can find like a variety kit of different bits and stuff like that. This one's got 200 pieces of grinders, sanders, cutting wheels, and all kinds of stuff. Um, again, it's got some replacement bits and stuff. I think it says you know, $120 value. Again, I think it was like at Home Depot for like 30 bucks or something or 35 bucks. Um, so well worth the investment. And another very early tool that I, and this is probably my second or third one, is uh, a heat gun. You're going to be using a heat gun quite a bit, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of work with uh, EVA foam or anything like that. Uh, you're going to be using the heat gun quite a bit. Um, I would get one with, you know, that, a temperature setting. But if you're going to be spending the money to get one, I would go ahead and get a pretty decent one that's going to last you. And of course, a power drill. You're going to be using this all the time. It doesn't have to be a uh, battery pack. It could be corded, but you're going to need a drill of some kind. Uh, so definitely invest in that. All right, well, last but not least, the most important tool in my array, and uh, very often the first tool, 
to get me started, coffee. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. And sorry again for the long lapse in episodes. Uh, as I said, I was uh, quite busy, but we're going to get things kind of back on track. I've got a lot of new projects coming up, and can't wait to show them to you guys. And of course, very soon we will be doing the studio tour, so watch out for that. Once again, these are the basic tools. These are the things, uh, these are not the only tools you are going to use. Um, you know, as you guys have seen, I have a ton of tools. Uh, it's taken me years to kind of accumulate. I will probably do another episode in the future where I do a tour of the workshop where I'll kind of go over some of the more, I guess, advanced tools that I have and use. But most of them are, exist to make things a little bit easier or faster. You can still build most of the things that you're gonna need to build with these basic tools. And as I said, uh, for years and years, these are the basic tools that I use to build stuff. I didn't have a lot of the space or I didn't have a lot of the room or I just didn't have the money. So you can definitely make do with these tools to get started. I hope this helps you guys out. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook at James Jim J. Raz. If you guys have any more questions or anything like that, you can drop me a line there. Also, for any of you guys who live in the Chicagoland area on March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Columbia College is having Columbicon, and I don't know if it's been going on for a few years, I think, but uh, Chan Lawson is going to be the guests there. So Rob and Doug and Malcolm and Tamara and myself will be there. I will be hosting a panel on March 5th called Just Build It, a prop maker's guide to cheap props. And basically I'll just be talking about a lot of the stuff that we cover here on the show. But you'll be able to see me in person and I'm going to have uh, some of the props with me and stuff like that. Some props that we've made in the past to kind of show off and answer questions and things like that. So if you guys are in the Chicagoland area and you want to check it out, I think it's only like five bucks a person or something like that for a day. Um, so yeah, swing by and check it out. Say hi. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you next time.